everybody. Thank you for tuning in to my prophetic insight. Today, I have an amazing guest. We have today with me evangelist John Ramirez. And if you do not know who John Ramirez is, John Ramirez is a former warlock, a former Satanist that for 25 years he served Satan. But now he has given his life to expose the kingdom of darkness and is advancing the kingdom of light. And I'm so honored to have with me today, Evangelist John Ramirez. Brother John, thank you so much for joining me on, on this episode. I'm so honored to have you here. Oh, well, thank you so much, my sister. It's a pleasure's mind and I want to be a blessing to your ministry and, and to those that are listening because, you know, one, one scripture I, I always I tell people, and this is a scripture, I mean, every scripture is important. Every scripture, I mean, from Old Testament to New Testament, it has value, it has depth, it's priceless. But Jesus says something that is very profound. Jesus said, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. And I think that is so true to the body of Christ today. That we 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 living in times now that people are really uh, numbed down to the systems of the world, to dumb down to the systems of the enemy, and we and we perish because of the lack of knowledge. Because we we don't we don't understand the things of the spirit. We don't understand the things of the spirit realm. We don't have that deep inner relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, and I agree with you, brother John. I think. That's the reason why so many believers are bound and they're going through psychiatry and on medicine because we're medicating what needs to be delivered. And you know, you're, medicating, you're medicating demons. That's right. <laughs> so, I've never seen Jesus medicate a demon. I've seen Jesus cast them out. He never medicated them. He never sent them to CBS or Rite Aid or, or Walgreens. Go get your medication, demon. Never seen that in the Bible. That's so true. And I think, Brother John, the, the saddest thing that I'm seeing in the body of Christ, especially here in America, is that we, we don't think that Jesus has the power enough to deliver people, that now we don't see even the ministry of deliverance in the church any longer. Because the first thing that people do now or pastors is, okay, if they're battling this, let's go take them to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. When Jesus has given us power over every principality, power, and ruler. Right. You see, but this is, this is the strategy of the enemy. I have to remove out of the church what works. The deliverance ministry is a, it's a children's bread. I have to remove it out of there and put something in replacement. So what did, what did the devil do? He takes out the deliverance ministry out of the church and he put the new age. He put the new age because, the, the, because you, the true, not even the true gospel is being preached today in the church. So the devil's not afraid of the church because you don't preach the true gospel. The devil's not afraid of the church because you don't preach, you, you don't cast out demons. So your church is very happy. If, you make the, if you're making the devil comfortable in your church, then God is uncomfortable in your church. No, and that's what we got today. That's so true. That is so true. Well, Brother John, I think there's, there's so much that needs to be exposed here because I, I think that we're living in a day and an age where now more than ever, the kingdom of darkness is now more bold than ever. But this is where the people of God have to really rise up and be even more bold um, because we're living in those last days and the time is now. Mm -hmm. And one thing, one thing you see, the, the devil started at the Garden of Eden, right? I mean, we hear Genesis, the book of beginnings. He started as a serpent. Now you go to the book of Revelation, he's a dragon. Look at the power. That the, look at the power from, from a serpent of the Garden of Eden all the way to the book of Revelation as a dragon. So in, in, no, in the churches at large today, they love talking about the devil. But none of them are confronting the enemy. None of them confronting the enemy. They're good talking about him, but they don't confront him and cast him out. Wow, Brother John, that's, that's a powerful revelation. And, and, and before we go even deeper, because it, it's already going deep, but I want to start off, uh, Brother John, with your life story. Um, how, how was your childhood like that you ended up stepping into Satanism? You know, I, I, I came from a family, my dad's family, my, my, my dad's family. We came from a my dad's bloodline. The bloodline of my father's family came from witches, Santeria, Peritimo, Paloma Yumbe, you know, uh, tower cars, astral projecting. We came from that side of the family. 
and from Puerto Rico, we immigrated to the United States at the Bronx from when I was one years old. At seven and a half years old, I got recruited from seven and a half years old. I already was recruited from the second heaven, which is the principality. A necklace fell down. It hit my foot. I was seven and a half years old. I was out playing with some, uh, I remember the kid I was playing, he was like the bully in the neighborhood. The necklace fell, the seven, uh, siete potencia. That's the name of the necklace, the seven, the seven powers of the dark side. Fell from the sky, fell on my, right on my feet. I grabbed the necklace, I stuffed it into my pocket because I was like, if, if, if the guy sees it, my friend, he's a bully, he'll take it away from me. Now this is, this is the, then from, I heard my mom's voice yelling my name. That was the demon mimicking my mother's voice. So I can just run home. And then as soon as I got on, ran home, I took the necklace out of, out of my, uh, my pocket and I put it on. And that's, how, that's when my journey began. Eight, eight years old, I was already in the witch house, La Santera, the Peritita. I was already in her house doing my first ceremony into the dark side. And that's not including, my father was a warlock. So my father practiced witchcraft in the house. All we saw day in, day out, my father was doing witchcraft, lighting candles to St. San Lazaro, lighting candles, flowers doing baths, doing ceremony. And then my father would turn the living room on fire and he'll have me and my brothers, he'll, purify, he'll, he'll make us jump over the fire to purify us and to, and to dedicate us to the dark side. How long, Brother John, were you involved in? 20, 25 years. Oh my God. 25 years in 1999. And I got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding. I don't know why Christians celebrate Halloween. I mean, you in bed with the devil for one night and then you're cheating on Jesus for one night and you think that it's okay because it's a one night once a year. Now the devil own legal rights in your life because you went to bed with the devil for one night on Halloween. It's like, it's like saying, uh, it's like the Satanist people saying, we can't wait to Good Friday so we can go to your church with you on Good Friday. That ain't gonna happen. No devil worshipers will go to Good Friday. They will not come to church on a Good Friday. So why are we going to the devil's, <laughs> why are we going to the devil's party on Halloween and then getting dressed? This is the thing. When you get dressed in Halloween, you're changing your identity of what God called you to be, and the devil own now the devil own right over your identity. Brother John, so in in now that we're embarking on that one, so these churches that do these harvest fests and they invite that, that's the devil. That's the devil, my sister. You can't, <laughs> you can't, you, you you can't do this this harvest thing. The harvest is the people out there that are lost. The harvest is the people that are going to hell. That is the harvest that Jesus told about. This harvest candy, and you're giving candy, you're getting people come dressed like little Noah, little Abraham. They ain't working, and you still celebrating the devil. You ain't coming with that with that garbage. Throw that stuff out of your church. And now you now you want to play Jesus, and you want to slap Jesus' name on it. You in bed with the devil too, Pastor. I agree with you, Brother John. I agree with you. And during these times that you were involved in in Satanism, what were some of the things that you ended up doing? Um, and maybe one of the, in your opinion, what was one of the biggest things that you did while, when you were in Satanism? What put witchcraft on people? I was witchcraft for hype, put witchcraft on people, give people abortion, give people miscarriages, witchcraft on people, divorce, people get divorced, put infirmity spirit on people, put suicide spirit on people, uh, put, put oppression, depression, suicide, homosexual spirit on people. I went to demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning. I mean, I went to demon church. I had, I, I, there was more power in demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning than the regular church down the block. The regular church on the block, the pastor was home having pound cake and a little coffee and going to bed. And we were, we were up all night doing witchcraft, doing ceremonies. And it's not that Jesus is weak, because Jesus is all powerful. It's just the church is anemic. Brother John, so in those years that you were doing Satanism, who were your main targets? Was it Christian? Christian, Christian my main target. I used to love these hallelujah people, but beat them dumb spiritually. You know, I not I don't say that's a brag. I'm, 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 it's not a boast. I'm, I'm, I'm about Jesus. I'm about the church. I'm about the kingdom. I'm about sending, the, set, helping people, the, setting the captives free. But the Christians were the easy people to beat up. I mean, spiritually, they had no, they had no game. They had no fight. They had no, they had, they had no, you know, they have a form of godliness, but denying the power. They had no power. They had nothing. I recruit Christians because I would tell Christians because I knew the battlefield was in the mind. If you give me a chance to get in your mind through my words. I will control your mind. If I can control your mind, I can control your mind, will, and emotion and recruit you to the dark side. There was nothing that you were able to stop when I was, when I was coming at you because you, you had no substance. You were a spiritual anemic. You were just a Sunday, you were just a Sunday Christian. Not, not, you, you, you didn't have a lifestyle. 
of being a believer. There's a difference between a believer and a Christian. Christians are like a Christian Dior. Anybody is a Christian. But a believer is the one that spends time and cultivate that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That person is unmovable, unshakable. That person has substance. He has the Holy Spirit, and he has an anointing. He has discernment, and he has, and he, he has a calling and a purpose and a destiny. But the other Christians that call themselves Christian, they just, they just went to church to just check in, you know, clock, Jesus, I'm here. So, Brother John, going in that topic, so what would Christians need to do in order to be and stay strong? It's like, it's like you, you talk to Christians today, and they know of Jesus. They know of the Holy Spirit. And then it's funny, their friend calls them up, and their friend plays a prank on the phone. Oh, I know. Oh, it's you, Willie. I know it's you, Willie. Why would you know it's Willie? Because you know the voice of Willie. You hang out too much with Willie. You spend time, a lot of time with Willie. That's when you know the Willie's voice. But you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit because you don't spend time with him. You see? So the devil comes. The devil mimics the voice of the Holy Spirit. You have no discernment to know whose voice it is. And then you drink the Kool-Aid. You see? So, so my relationship, when I first became a believer, God said to me, keep your eyes on me. Built your relationship with me. I didn't build my relationship with the church. I built my relationship with the living God. The church was just a bonus. But I built my relationship with Jesus Christ. I know his voice. I walk with him. I seen too much in Jesus to doubt. You know, even today, I have my eyesight been my eyesight been very affected by the enemy from January 21st until now. And and what the devil does, the devil knocks on my door. And what the devil say? Oppression, depression, question God. You know what I do? I don't open the door. I don't open the door because I've seen too much in Christ and I don't put God on trial. Why let this happen to me? Where were you? Why you let the devil attack me? I don't put God on trial because who am I to put God on? I have a real solid in, in a holy of holy relationship with Jesus Christ. And brother John, I, I can, I understand your, your perspective because it's so true. A couple of years back when I was working as a youth pastor, I've noticed that sometimes many pastors, they only spend time with God when they're about to preach a sermon. But other than that, they don't spend time with the Lord for themselves because they want him. And in my early years of ministry as a youth pastor, I remember that a neighbor actually cast a spell on me and my family that when I touched the doorknob of my apartment, there was some sort of an oil there. And the mm -hmm. minute I touched it, I had an immense headache that lasted for a whole week that I wanted to throw up. And I started asking God, why am I being attacked? But the years went by that I recognized that during those years, I wasn't spending time with the Lord. I wasn't in daily consistent prayer. I wasn't reading my Bible daily. I was only preparing the messages for the week. But now as the years have gone by, I've noticed that now when I have a consistent relationship with Jesus, when the enemy attacks, I know how to fight. I can resist him and he flees because now I have the power necessary to combat the enemy. Something, you said something that Christians don't have, consistency. Christians, Christians, they start everything and finish nothing. Consistency. That is the key because you don't know, even, even in spiritual warfare, you have to have consistency because you don't know how long the fight's going to be. The fight might go all 12 rounds with the devil. It, it's not a one night or one round knockout. It might happen once in a while, but you might have to go all 12 rounds with the enemy on this fight to walk out of there with the, with the victory. So uh, my life, my life, my life walking in, with Jesus Christ, I, man, if I didn't walk with Jesus Christ the, the way I do my sister today, you think those witches would have killed me a long time ago. They're still after me. They're still witchcraft to me. They're still upset with me. I get email. How saying we're going to kill you? We're going to kill your daughter. I get these emails from the devil worshipers because I'm exposing them. And you know what I do? I laugh at the jokes because you know what? I died when Jesus told me to die, not you. So, Brother John, at what led you to the Lord Jesus? What made you realize that you needed to let go of the kingdom of darkness? Oh, yeah, it sure was in church. <laughs> it sure was in church. The church had nothing to offer me, and they, and they, they would have no power to convince me that Jesus Christ was Lord and Savior. Jesus took me to hell. I left my body in 1999. I went to hell as a devil, demonic monster, and I came back as a believer of Jesus Christ. That's, that's how my salvation came. I had one of them Paul Damascus experience. I left my body, 
1999, matter of fact, it was 19, October of 1999, I was preparing for the biggest onslaught witchcraft arsenals I have to do witchcraft on a whole bunch of people. And I sat on my bed, I sat on my bed and I heard, uh, I sat on my bed and the Lord said to me, uh, God was talking to me and I said, I don't know who you are. I don't, I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in your church. Your church is weak and anemic. I want nothing to do with that. I got more power on the dark side. I, I, I was running regions in the spirit realm. I was controlling regions in the spirit realm. I will ask you, I have more miles than any Delta airline. You can, you know, I always leave my body, contract with a demon, leave my body, astral project, silver cord, in the air, astral projecting, cursing regions, controlling regions from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I was one, I was a general in the kingdom of darkness. There was nothing that I didn't even never want to be a Christian. I mean, well, I mean who, who wants to be a Christian? You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be, you, you gotta be stupid to be a Christian. Who wanna be that? Because what I saw, what Christianity looked like, it was feeble, weak, and un, it had no taste to it. So, as a devil, drinking my blood, drinking animal blood, taking human bones, signing down human bones that had cancer, so I can put witchcraft on people and cancer. I had power. People were afraid of me. I had all this stuff. And Jesus, and, and all I did, my sister sat on the bed. I ain't gonna be no Christian. You, you, you came to the wrong apartment. This ain't gonna be me. And so you leave me alone. But the one thing that happened, I was, I, all that came out of my mouth, it wasn't even my word. If you are bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me tonight or leave me alone. Soon as I said that, I fell into this anesthesia sleep, deep sleep, and I left my body. I ended up in hell, ended up on a train first. This train was hellbound, going. I never seen something so fast in my entire life. This thing was going so fast. And there was people on the train that were that you couldn't see the faces. They had no faces. But they know they were going to a place that they never were going to return. The terror on that train. And then Jezebel was on the train. Calling because I had a contract with Jezebel. Said, I'm Anaisa. Anaisa in in a peritimo. Uh, the Dominican people are very big on Isa. She dressed in a black wedding dress. That's Jezebel on a different realm of the spirit. So I had a contract with Jezebel and Jezebel was on a train in demonic tongue that we copy everything from the kingdom of Jesus. We speak in demonic tongue. We lay demonic hands. We fall backwards and slain in the spirit, but we slain with demons. We copy everything that the church does. The, the only difference between the church, the real church and the, and the devil church that the real church got the presence of God. See, that's what separates us from them. We got demonic, you have, you have, you have worship songs. We got demonic worship songs. So everything you have, we have. So they was like, what do what, 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 I want to be Christian? I got everything they have, I have. I don't need anything but the presence of God. And, I, and as soon as I left my body, I fell into the sleep on the train. Jezebel called me a traitor, crashed right into hell. The doors open. Man, when the doors open in hell, the first thing you say, I don't belong here because God never made you to go to hell. And when you want, I stepped into hell, my sister, the ground in hell. When I stepped into hell, the ground in hell breathes like a human being. It breathes like a person. You can hear it. Like, every time you step on it, you go, Whew. it breathes like a person. And then I saw people in hell that were in, uh, they were in Santeria and in Espiritismo. They was into spiritualism. I saw them in hell. They was part of the, they was part of the occult that I was in. And they were, but they were still alive on the earth. And later God showed me that these people were not going to, they're not going to repent. And, and as I step into hell, the fear, the, 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 I mean, we talk about the demonic gross fear in hell. And then the, the, the it then fear wraps around you like a human being. And I, I said, how, how do I get out of here? They said, we don't know. Maybe you should go that way. So I went into the tunnels of hell. As I went to the, there were very narrow tunnels of hell. As I walk, you can hear the ground breathing. You can hear the wailing. You can hear the cries. You can, you can feel, you can feel the terror wrapped around you like a, like a person, like a straight jacket wrapped around you. You can't, sh it's the, the, the torment fear down there. It's not even, it, it, it's not even on the earth. It's not even on the earth. And then the devil came out and the devil said, I loved you. You were my son. I'm going to have to destroy you. I gave you all the powers. I show you all the secrets of my kingdom. How could you do this to me? How are you going to leave me now? You give me no choice. You break my heart that I have to destroy. You. The devil can't love you. You made an image of God. Okay? The devil hates you. The devil hates you. I don't care how buddy you think the devil's with you. He hates you because you remind him of God. 
you, we are made in the image of our Lord and Savior. There's no way how the devil can ever love you. He was lying. And as the devil was lying, he went to, he went to grab me. As he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell and dropped them like nothing. And it happened twice in hell in two different parts of the tunnel. And then when I came back into my body, I felt like I was in ICU and it was bringing me back to life, like doing these electrical paddles in my chest. That's the best way I can describe it. When I came back into my body, when I came back to my, this was, and this was real. I went to hell. It was no dream. There was no uh, Peter Pan and Captain Hook. This is real. I, it, for me to leave a demonic world, 25 years of warlocks and witches that I was dedicated, they were my family, to leave them, to go to hell and come back and go back into my body and become a Christian, the last thing I wanted to do. Hell is real. And hell are for those that are on godly people people of the world and even ungodly christians hell is waiting for you i, was, I told you a person the other day i told a person the other day i think hell is going to have more people than heaven i told i told someone the other day and and that's how i became a christian because i went to hell and came back and bent my knee and made jesus christ my lord and savior at that point brother john how can you explain the difference between the presence of God and the presence of Satan. The presence of Satan is, it has limits. That you can't even describe God. He has to be revealed. God is so big. God is so, uh, God, the, Satan, it, it, Satan is a wimp compared to who God is. The sovereignty of God, you can't even scratch the surface of who God is. I mean, you know, it, it, it is, he is an amazing, amazing, oh, my heart cries out to know that Jesus Christ in my demonic, despicable, ugly monster, he loved me and gave me a second chance. And that, the devil has nothing. You can't even, the devil has a birth certificate. Jesus don't have a birth certificate. That is powerful. So brother John, when, when you stepped into the kingdom of light, what was the aftermath when you renounced the kingdom of darkness? Because I know that it, the, the enemy is not going to want to let you go that easily. No, the witches, from, the witches from Santo Domingo, the witches from Cuba, the witches from Haiti, the witches from Miami, and the ones in New York, they got together to try to kill me. They, they, they did so much witchcraft to me that I would have to sleep during the day and stay up at night and wait for the demons to come. For 30 days, I was so tormented that if it, if it would have went an extra day, I think I would, I would have lost my mind. That's how I didn't sleep for those 30 days. I was tormented. They would rip me. They would try to rip my soul out of my body. They would pull my legs. I could hear, I could hear the footsteps coming down the hall to come into my room, and my room would go cold. And the, and the demons were standing right over my bed and choking me and grabbing me and tormenting me. Day and night, I was tormented for 30 days, and there was no Jesus to be found. And I was like, Jesus, where are you? I, I gave my life to you. I, I, I would try to pray because I hear people in church. I was a young Christian. I hear people pray, this sister pray this way, that brother pray. I try to mimic their prayers to, to, to get these monsters off me. And one day, after the 30 days, it stopped. Nothing stopped. They never came, to, they never came back to torment me, torment me or try to kill me. And I was like, I won. I was like, didn't, would they come the next day? I'll be ready. Uh, would they come in next week? I'll be ready. And one day, Jesus, uh, I was in church worshiping. And the voice of God said to me, you remember? You asked me, why did they torment you? And I do nothing. And I said, no. I said, Lord, why? You didn't do nothing. He said, I want to see how much you trust me. And how much you love me. And never again, the devils came and torment me again. They never came and torment me ever again. And I went, to a, I went to a funeral. This is, this is another thing. I went to this funeral about this lady. She was an ex-devil worshiper. And I went to the funeral to, 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 because I, I, warned her for, I warned her for Christ. I warned her for Christ. So she, she, had, she died of cancer three months later. She had cancer. She never told nobody. And she died of cancer, but she, can't, she became a believer. And she threw all her Santeria stuff out. And I came, I came to her. And, I, and I, introduced, I spoke to her about Jesus. And she knew my testimony. And she knew what God did. She received Jesus. She threw all her stuff away. And then three months later, she died. When I went to the funeral, it, it, was, it, it, it took seven years, seven years to see the devil worshipers, the clan, the, 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 the cult, the sector that I was in. They were all in the funeral. 
And when I went in there, it took, they didn't see me for seven years. These are the people that baptized me to the dark side. They, I didn't see them for seven years. When I walked in, they looked at me like, oh my God. I, I, they looked at me like, we didn't kill you yet. You still alive. We still haven't killed you yet. That's how they looked at me. And then every time I stand next to them in the funeral, they were, they were, they were like, 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 they were like, like, gibbling, you know, like, like they were like, like nervous, like, you know, like, like, like they couldn't control themselves. And I said, Lord, what's wrong with them? Like, and he said, the Lord said, darkness can't stand where the light stands. And God prepared me for seven years. God prepared me for seven years to see these people for 40 minutes. And when I walked out that funeral, that world was behind me. Brother John, so what led you to step out into the ministry and expose the kingdom of darkness? I, I didn't volunteer for that either, my sister. I wanted to play the piano and be a worshiper. I, mean, I, I thought I felt like I felt like I was I was mad I was mad with Jesus for a couple for like two and a half years. I was like, Lord, come on, are you for real? You gonna make me go back into this deliverance stuff? I just came out of demon stuff for twenty five years. Why am I gonna go back? Why can't I be? A, why can't I just be a piano player in, in a church and be part of the worship team? I want to do that part. And then uh, I, and then I said, I'm not gonna do no no deliverance. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my own story. I told Jesus, I'm going to do my own story. So I signed up for piano lessons. And uh, I went, I went, to, I went to piano lessons. It was like five bucks a lesson, right? So I went and the teacher, after the third or fourth lesson, the teacher said, Hey, hey uh, Mr. Ramirez, stay behind. I need to talk to you. So I was like, okay. I mean, and, and it was cheap because it was like uh, the commission of the blind. Cause I was blind by the way, in 1997, the devil took my eyesight for one year because I got punished because I took a sabbatical from witch rock. So the devil took my eyesight for one year. So in 2002, the devil took my eyesight. He sucker punched me. He took my eyesight for three and a half months. So I joined the commission of the blind to learn how to play the piano, but I, I was able to see. And the teacher said, she said to me, do me a favor. Don't come back to the class. Don't come back to the class. You don't know how to play no piano. You are the worst student ever. Don't come back. I said, but these people are blind. She said, but they can play. You, you can see, you can't play. Don't come back. Do, do us a favor. You slow enough the class. Then I said, okay, Lord, I give up. I become, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Uh, if you want me to be in deliverance, I'll do that. So that's how I became a, that's how I became a deliverance. And, and, and the, my, the, my, uh, my heroes of my faith was, David Wilkerson, Nikki Cruz, and Billy Graham. Mm. I remember as a young Christian in Queens, in Flushing Meadow Park, as a young Christian, not knowing that I had a calling, I sat with a ham and cheese, I sat with a Coca-Cola ham and cheese sandwich under a tree and heard Mr. Billy Graham preach. And never knew that God was gonna do something for me. And I seen the life of Nikki Cruz, which is one of the amazing men of God. Nikki Cruz, I mean, what an anointing on this man. And never thought that God can use me that way. And, I, and, and David Wilkinson meant to me for three years and never thought that some, never thought that even I would ever write a book in my life. And, look, and God is writing my story. And look what he has done. Praise God, Brother John. I think the Lord really needed to use your story for thousands of other believers and unbelievers to come to know the truth, to be set free. And it comes with a cost because following Jesus is not easy. It comes with a cost, but it comes with a great reward at the end. And with that, Brother John, um, for those that are, you know, young adults and they, you know, they're so bombarded with social media. You know, they think that if they have a crystal or they light a candle or if they use sage, you know, they give them good vibes. What is your um, advice uh, for Christians that are dabbing into that mixture of godliness and paganism? Well, the, 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 I call it better. I call it godliness and demonic. The, it, demonic. You're dancing with the devil, but you want to hang out with Jesus. You can't eat from both masters' table. Either eat one or eat from the other, or love one or hate the other. And when you into this mystical, when you into this realm of the mystical, and you mix yourself with mixture, whether through your words, through things that you practice, things that you read, things that you hear, things that you watch, you give the devil legal rights over your life, over your spirit, over your soul, over your mind. And Tom, don't tell me that you're gonna light a candle and a candle is gonna help you get to the next level. 
the devil's going to push you to the next level, but you're going to pay a price. Trust me. I did 25 years of witchcraft. I know how the game is played. I got the devil's playbook. I know how the game is played, and I know how the game is going to finish if you don't get right with God. And with that, Brother John, I think a lot of young adults need to be very cautious in what they listen to and what they watch. But you got the witches right now. You got witches in church. You got people doing angel cards. Angel cards. That's true. Angel, but what the heck is angel cards? Mm -hmm. You're not but a devil. You're not but a, a devil in a Christian suit doing angel cards. Right? This church is doing angel cards, angel boys. I mean, what, what, what did you see? What did you see? Did you see the disciples walk around with angel cards? There's this fake prophetic stuff that's going around the church today. The fake prophetic stuff. This is all, this, these are familiar spirits ramping up the church, ramping up and down, giving you a word from God. There ain't no word from God. There's a word from the devil. I did, listen, I, I did the prophetic and the demonic. I was, I had a PhD doing the prophetic and the demonic. I know when the devil, I know the voice of the devil disguised as an angel of light. And I, I know the devil's game disguised as an angel of light. And these things that they're doing today in the church, there's new age, new age gospel, there's new age teaching, there's new age uh, theology, there's new age, you can reach a horoscope, you can go to the witch and get your cars read, you can go get your, you can get your tower cars read, you can call 1-800 Miss Cleo, you can do all this stuff. That is, you are in, you are in bed with the enemy and the devil play for keeps. Yeah, Brother John, and the, the Bible is very clear. The, the Apostle Paul says, do not give any foothold to the enemy in any way. And a lot of people, especially the young adults, y'all need to be aware, guys, that anything that does not glorify, magnify, point people to Jesus, we have no business with that kind of stuff. It, it, even, like you said, Brother John, I, uh, TikTok is one of the most uh, famous social media targets right now in for the young adults and for teens and we're seeing there just thousands of little clips of people promoting angel tarot cards and talking to your angels that is that is anti-biblical because even the apostle paul says we don't worship angels we don't talk to angels because no we they don't did not, they did not die on the cross for us no what would i what would i, what would I, when would I want to talk to an angel but i can talk to jesus Mm -hmm. I don't need to talk to the angel. I want to talk to Jesus. I don't need to talk, I, you know, the, 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 the ignorance of, of, of the church today, thinking I, I have a messenger, I, I, I have a guardian angel. You know, when I was in witchcraft, we call it guia protector. That's what we call it in the witchcraft for a guardian angel, protect the spirits. That's what we call it. And you have the Christian using the same lingua. Yeah, I, oh, I have, God gave me an angel to protect me. God don't need to send an angel to protect you. The Holy Spirit is the one that protects you. Holy Spirit is the one that protects you. Jesus said, I go to my father. So I sent a helper. He didn't say, I sent Gabriel to go help you, or Michael. He said, I sent, man, read your Bible, man. Be, be, let the word of God be your best friend. Yes, Brother John, so on point. You know, Brother John, um, one of the things that I see worldwide is that witchcraft is very, very common in the other parts. It's very of the popular. World. It's very yes. popular, and then they dress it up with fashion. Yes, so but they know how to dress it up so you can drink it. Mm -hmm. But here in America, it's become very discreet that I see, Brother John, that a lot of Americans here in the church are very ignorant when it comes to witchcraft. And one of the things that I've known as, as a Hispanic woman, you know, witches do have power. We know that it's limited power, but they do have power. And one of the things that I know is that witches do have the ability to transform themselves into animals. And a lot of yeah, Christians... I, I used to do that. that. I, you know, witchcraft, I did it. I used to shifters. I used to do shifters. I would shift myself into a wolf and end up in your house. I would do that. I would, I would, it's called shifters. I would shift myself into a wolf and end up there because it's been the contract of the demon that I had. So these people think that this is a joke. You can play with fire, but you're never going to get burned. You got something else coming because whatever you, whatever you make, whatever you come, wherever you put yourself, like say, if, if, if you come in agreement with the devil, the devil understand that he's going to come collect later on i don't care. listen one thing about jesus christ even jesus christ the son of god never took the devil lightly never never mocked the devil he never mocked the devil never took him lightly called him by his name called him the serpent called him the dragon called him lucifer he called him by name even in the wilderness even in the wilderness when he was in the wilderness and the three temptations jesus never took the devil lightly 
but the church is taking the devil lightly. These believers are taking the devil lightly. And one thing about the devil, he's very powerful. He's very powerful. I tell you, he's very, even Jesus didn't take him lightly. And it's not that I'm promoting enemy. I'm not promoting. I hate him. I hate him as much as I love Jesus. But I'm telling believers, you better wake up before it's too late. Because when the devil comes to collect, if you are, if you are out of God's, if you're out of God's will, the devil is going to, the devil is going to come kill still and destroy you. There's many Christians today, they're dying before their time. They're dying there's many Christians with premature death, and you can't blame God for anything because God left one thing in the, in the God left one thing on the earth. He left two things on the earth that if you don't live by that, you can't blame God. He left the Word and He left the Holy Spirit. Brother John, that's so that's so awesome because that's true. We live in a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and if Christians are being defeated. Well, we know that they're not really connected to the vine because when you're connected to the vine, you have some source of power to always overcome the tricks of the enemy. Yeah, that's why Peter said you can't have, you know, the devil knows, the devil, the devil been playing this game for many centuries. The devil, you know, he, he sucker punched King David. He sucker punched Saul. He sucker punched so many of the old prophets. He sucker punched, um, so he sucker punched Judas. Judas walk with jesus three years in the ministry face to face with jesus and still the bible said that the devil entered him because he wasn't right with god he walked with god just because you walk with god you go to church doesn't mean you're right with god i'd rather not go to church and be right with god and the church is and i love church because the bible said don't 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 uh leave the assembly of the brethren i love church but the bottom line is it's about being right with God, being right standing with God, because and then the doors are closed. You, if, if, even when you're in God's perfect will, the devil still attacks you. Look at the Job. Job was in God's perfect will, and the devil still attacked. But in the end, God blessed him twice. And with the bottom line, Christians, they make contracts with the devil with the words that they speak, the words of death. They make contracts. The devil has, the devil has demons assigned to your words. And they make contracts with, with words. The Bible says, life and death lays in your tongue. Which one are you speaking today? Brother John, can you elaborate on that just for those that don't understand what you're saying? Well, it, 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 it is, it's, 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 a, it's a, for example, you take Mary, Martha, you take Lazarus, right? What they do, what, what, they, what, what they did, Jesus said, the Bible said Jesus wept when Lazarus died. He didn't, he didn't wept because Lazarus died. He wept because he had a broken heart. He had a broken heart because Martha and Mary got into this accusation spirit. Or where were you? Where my brother died? You weren't here. You showed up late. Where were you? If you were here, my brother be this. Jesus was grieved in his heart that these people that were so-called friends and many Christians put God on because they're going to a time of trouble. They put God on trial and they start to question God. They start bad-mouthing God. Where were you? You God. Where were you? When, you? when you speak that way, you give the devil the glory and you minimize Jesus Christ. That's what you do. You speak death into God. And who are you to speak to God that way? You're nobody. God don't owe you nothing. Even in the book of Job, chapter one, there was a conversation between God and the devil. And in chapter 38, God, when God spoke to Job for the first time, right? He said, put on, he said, put on your shorts. I'm going to come talk to you, right? When God spoke to Job, he never gave Job no explanation about he ever spoke to the devil about Job. Job never knew what happened. God told, God spoke to him about creation. What were you when I created this? In zoology. That was God's talk with Job. He never told him, me, me and the devil had a conversation with you and you didn't get the text. Were you not in social media? You didn't see the conversation me and uh, the devil had? Did you check out Facebook? No, never told them anything. And, and Christians are, they, when an, I live here in New York City, and when the 9-11 happened, Christians were blaming, where was God? Where would God let this happen? Why would God allow this to happen? You're blaming God. You know what? No one was angry at the devil, but everyone was angry at God. And many Christians today, they're not angry at the devil, they give the devil a free pass, but they're angry with God because they didn't get what they wanted. They didn't get the promotion. They didn't get the girlfriend they wanted. They didn't get the marriage they wanted. And they blame God for everything. You're blaming God. You're making, you're making, you're making a verbal agreement, a contract verbal agreement with the devil. Not that's your daddy. 
Brother John, that's so powerful. And I, and I think you nailed it because that's where a lot of Christians are at. They see Jesus as their butler, but they don't see him as king. And when they don't have him as king, when trials and tribulations come, they'll quit. They'll throw in the, they'll throw in the towel because they never had Jesus as king. They want Jesus for the benefits, but they don't want, they don't want him. They want Jesus. It's like the church. They want the gifts, but they don't want the gift giver. Understand? They want they, Jesus is a Jesus is like the, the spare tire in the back of the car in case you catch a flat, you bring them out. That's that's the Christian that that's the Christian we have today. Even Peter said, even I, even I think in the book of Peter, he said you can't have spring water and you can't have you can't have uh, you can't have spring water and you can't have bitter water come out of both places. Either you you do one or you do the other. And you know even today, my eyesight, two surgeries. In, 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 in less than three months, you know, really can't see my sister. I see blurred, but I'm giving Jesus the glory. I'm giving Jesus his worth. I'm giving Jesus what he, what he deserves. I'm praising him. I'm worshiping him. I'm not questioning him. I'm not putting him on trial. I'm not embarrassing him in front of the devil. Jesus is sovereign. He's too sovereign for you to even talk that way. Talk that way. You, you the son of the devil. When you talk, you're the daughter of the devil when you speak the way you speak because words have consequences. In the, in, the, in the rounds of the spirit, words have consequences. Wow, Brother John, this is, this is so powerful. And these young people, because they're not been, they have not been discipled. Mm. These young people have not been discipled because when you and I went, when I first went to church 21 years ago, the first thing that threw me in was a discipleship discipleship class and after the discipleship class they told me in the foundation class they were building my my relationship with god not with the church i was disciple and discipleship foundation class and and learning how to wait on god and receiving the gift the, receiving the holy spirit and receiving the the, the the heavenly language we don't do that in church no more in that church come we, we got you got a little you got you get yourself a chocolate donut or you get a chocolate uh, cookie and you got a starbucks going on you come in with your little starbucks coffee this ain't the mall. This is holy ground. No respect for the house of God. No you walk in whenever you want. You talk during the service. You have no respect for that. You expect to be blessed. You go into hell. No, no reverence. No reverence for holy God. Even, even Isaiah, the prophet, the eagle-eyed prophet, Isaiah, when he saw God, he said, woe unto me, what he saw. Woe unto me. He said, I am dead. He saw God, how he lifted up. He saw the throne. He saw his, his temple. He saw, he saw, he saw his, his robe cover the temple. He, he fell. He couldn't, he couldn't do He didn't know what to do. Even Paul, even the, Paul was a murderer. Paul was a Saddam Hussein of his time. Paul was an intellect, knew five languages. And Paul, when he got in the role of the master, when Jesus dropped him, he said, Lord, what you want me to do? And these wanna be Christian wanna take God, take God as a joke. The joke is on you, because God will not be mocked. You know, Brother John, it breaks my heart to see exactly what you said that Jesus is actually the gift. And we're asking Jesus, do this, do this for me. And we're looking around, yeah. looking at his hand. When are you gonna bless me? When Jesus is saying, I am the gift. Even mm -hmm. God told Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. The reward is mm -hmm. Jesus himself. It's Jesus. It's it, it is the presence. Of the CEO of the universe to see it. they people they people fall over for Apple, you know, or oh, for Apple or uh, whatever his name was, the guy that died for Apple, uh, you know, people people will melt in their pants when they see him. He said, "The man, the Jesus is the CEO of the universe. He holds he holds the planet by the word of his mouth. He holds the galaxies. He, he Jesus is a master architect, and you're gonna come with your ignorant talk." language behavior you can't even talk like that to your boss because you'd be fired and your boss nothing but a man he's the son of the devil your boss and you don't even dare talk like that to him but you talk like you talk to god any way you want yeah brother john the the fear of the lord is was lacking in the hearts of the people of god but i believe brother john that we're stepping in an age where the true sons and daughters are, are arising and the fear of god is being restored in the hearts because now we're seeing that there's the a remnant yes, remnant yes there's a remnant that's rising up and do little, you know, it's amazing. I go to California and preach and you got to see the people that come to California and hear me preach. These people, they don't look like preachers, but they got the fear of God. They got the love of God. They look like gangbangers. They look like crazy. 
I, I just heard, I just got a report that they got this guy, he coming from France. He's one of the biggest, biggest gangsters in France. He got tattoos over his face. And he, he, he every time I go preach in California, he, he, in France, he's watching me. This guy's one of the biggest, the notorious gang members in, in France. But God, his heart is burning for Jesus Christ. God is taking the misfits and turning them into preachers, evangelists, the prophets. God is turning, taking the misfits of the world and turning them for his kingdom to turn the devil upside down. That's right, Brother John. We're living in some exciting times. Brother John, I want to continue with some of these questions that these young adults shared. Because mm -hmm. uh, I want to... I take all of the time that I have with you so that you can share your wisdom and your truth. But we have some young adults that are interested in knowing, is it wrong for Christians to get tattoos? Well, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I said this, right. The, the people say about tattoos, right. I, I said this, you know, my, I, I, I said, I, I have friends that got tattoos, right. And, uh, one day they were driving me around in California. I heard these pastors talking about tattoos. And really, in the Old Testament, New Testament, there's nowhere in that the speech about tattoos are bad. But the, the, they were saying, well, you should, you should get, if you don't get a tattoo, don't get no coat tattoos. My question is, I, I, I would not get a tattoo. I would not get that because I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit. I feel like, why should I mark my body and put something there? Now, if I was BC, before Christ, that's different. Now I'm in Christ. I'm not, you know, this is how I see it. If I'm out, if I'm, in, if I'm in Christ now, that means I'm not part of the world system anymore. Why am I going to act and do things? Or do, why would I want to continue to do things in the world? To be, because I feel like I want to be in fashion. I don't have to be in fashion. I don't have to keep up with the fashion of the world. I need to keep up with Jesus. Understand? I need to keep up with the Holy Spirit. The Bible said that the temple, the, the, the body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. What would I want to graffiti? What would I want to put graffiti on the temple of the Holy Spirit? It's like me going to your house and I, I bring a spray paint. I bring a can of spray paint and then I start spray painting your house. How would you feel? You're not going to be a happy camper if I spray paint your house, right? So what would you want to spray paint your body and make the Holy Spirit uncomfortable? Because basically it's not biblical. Even though it's not in the Bible, it's not biblical. You see, so I, 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 I think I will, keep my, I will keep the house the way the Holy Spirit wants it to be kept. That's good, Brother John. We have another question. Are, do witches have the ability to enter into the dreams of believers? And if so, what can they do? Well, you got to be prayed up. You got to be prayed up. Pray, don't just pray on Sunday. You have a prayer life. I, I, you know, I'm witches trying to come into my dream. I got witchcraft. People still come into my dream on, on, on Santeria parties and spiritualism parties. I show, up in, I show up in their parties. They drag me into their parties, right? Because in the spirit realm, what they're trying to do, they're trying to do two things in the spirit realm. They try to drag me into their parties so I can do ceremonies in my dream so that they can become a reality so they can recruit me back into the dark side. So when I come into what I'm prayed up before I go to bed. So when they show up, when I show up in their dreams, I show up, they show up in my dream, how you, whatever one you want to call it. I'm already prayed up. I'm, I, I came to fight in my dream. So when you try to put that, that garbage on me, when you try to put that garbage, I'm come out preaching in my dreams and they get upset when I come out preaching Jesus in my dream. And I tell them, I'm not that I'm this now. You see, in my dream, I even have, I even have dominion over my dreams. But this is what happened with Christian. This is the thing Christian do, the mistake. They have a bad dream about a snake or cobra, serpent. They have a bad dream about someone is chasing them. They tell everybody in the church, oh, I had this dream and this cobra was chasing me. You know what you're doing? You are manifesting your dream into a reality because that's what the devil wants. The devil, you see, as soon as I get up in the morning and I had this dream, I renounce them, I cut ties with them, and I shut the door with the blood of Jesus because I don't want nothing in my dream to manifest and become a reality when God is ungodly. And Christians, they talk about all the demonic dreams and you're giving the devil legal rights to your mouth. Because mouth, the words coming out of your mouth through the dreams that you have, you already made a contract for the devil when I even realize it. Wow, that's amazing. And then people like you and me, spiritual wealthy people like you and I, this is what the devil does. When he gives you dreams, the devil wants, the devil this is the, what the devil wants to do to believe to true believers like yourself, myself. The, you know what the devil does? He wants you to sleep, but don't get no rest. So when you wake up in the morning, you wake up restless and you're not in the spirit during the day because you're restless, you're tired. 
So the devil does. So he don't, the devil doesn't mind you going to sleep, but he don't want you to rest in your sleep. That's what the Bible says in, in Psalms that he gives us sweet sleep, which you refer yes. to rest. Right. Because when I used to do witchcraft to people, I wait for them to go to sleep. So I can do witchcraft to them because I wanted to disturb their sleep. Because if I can steal your sleep, I can steal your rest. Brother John, can you explain to our young audience what is spiritual warfare? Spiritual, well, spiritual warfare is making the devil your enemy. That's what spiritual warfare is about because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And Jesus said, I came to destroy the works of darkness. That is spiritual warfare. Spiritual, if you call yourself a believer and then you're in the radar, you are on the devil's radar. But you fight the good fight. You fight the good fight. You fight the good fight. You be a special op, be a spiritual sniper, be an OG for Jesus. It may be a spiritual gangster for Jesus. That's what God called you. God didn't call you to come in agreement with the devil. God didn't call you to play pity pat with the devil. And God didn't call you to make agreements with the devil. The devil is your enemy. He will always be your enemy. And spiritual warfare, is, it is fighting things in the spirit, the unseen things of the spirit that's trying to stop you from getting to heaven. How many Christians you know today? How long you been a Christian, my sister? How many Christians you started with that today they're no longer serving Christ? That's true. Why? Because the devil interrupted a plan and you can't blame God because there's many Christians, and I shared this last thing with you, they're dying with their baby inside, their purpose and their destiny. It's the saddest thing for a mother is to die with her baby inside. The saddest thing to a Christian is to die with your purpose and your destiny and never give glory to God. When God could have gave that to somebody else and he gave it to you. Brother John, for those that are going through a demonic attack, what are some signs that, you know, unfortunately, like I, I shared previously, unfortunately, we have a lot of pastors that when people are going through demonic attacks, they immediately think that it's a psychological thing and they send them to a psychologist or, or a psychiatrist. But what are some signs that believers um, can recognize in their own life that they are going through a demonic attack, that they are being demonically oppressed? Well, you know, you got to know the symptoms of whatever. If it's oppression, depression, if it's anxiety, they always fear, tormenting fear. Now the devil is, the devil is tormenting your mind because the, the battlefield is here. If you can't beat the devil here, you can't beat him out there. You see, so, so if I wake up, if I'm having a season of uh, peace alone, nothing missing, nothing broken, but things start to creep up on me that I never felt before, I know it's the enemy. I don't need to go to no psychologist. Let your pastor go to a psychologist. He needs it. I don't. I got the Holy Spirit. I don't need. I don't need to go to. I don't need to go to Walmart and grab. Uh, you know, twelve pills and make me better. I got the Holy Spirit. I pray that demon right off me. I fast and pray, and I take that demon. I renounce that demon. Whatever the way he attacking me, well, how he got in. Find out the open door how he got in. How did that demon got in? Is oppressing you. How did that demon got in? If you have anxiety. How did that demon got in? What door did he get into your life? Whether 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 it's fear. How did he get? Is it fear because of the, you're watching too much fake news? Now your spirit is consumed with fear because fake news became your Holy Spirit. You see, I haven't watched the news since 2020. I don't need to listen to the news. I'm going to give that time to God. So is it COVID-19 devil, that fake devil COVID-19? They got you paralyzed. But meanwhile, your governors are throwing parties and they're having a good time. They've got no mask on, but no one is dying over there. But they're telling you how you're going to die if you don't take this fake vaccine devil. That's why, man, the Bible says, you know, seek the kingdom of heaven first and his righteousness. In other words, what, seek the face of God. Don't seek God's hands. Give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Seek his face and the Holy Spirit will keep you, protect you, and get you to the finish line. And if you have oppression, depression, whatever you got, renounce it. Renounce it. Devil, listen to me. Devil of fear, devil of anxiety. Listen to me. I'm a child of the Most High God. Look at the seal in my spirit. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. Hit that word of God. Hit the word of God. Get some fasting, man. Break some communion cups in your house. Don't wait till you get to the church. Break some communion. Get into worship. Believe me, that devil will be gone. You don't have to go to Rite Aid. You don't have to go to CBS. And you're going to have to see no crazy psychologist because he's probably taking more pills than you are. Yes, Brother John, yes, that's so on point. And I think a lot of it, Brother John, a lot of the believers don't understand that we are in a warfare. It's a it's a body-to-body -body contact. That's what the Bible says, mm -hmm. resist the devil and he will flee. Mm -hmm. But Please. many believers want a quick remedy that they don't want to keep fighting. Jesus, Jesus is not a microwave. 
The devil is a microwave. The devil will give it to you quick and take it away quick. Jesus, this is, see, when we, when I, I mean, I don't know how long, I, when, I, when I was a devil worshiper, we was like, well, you have to show it to me so I can believe it. You have to show it to me. That's the devil's game. You have to show it to me. I can believe it. Jesus, you have to believe it before he shows it to you. He said, the, the difference between the kingdom of Jesus, Jesus' kingdom is aquaculture. You have to plant it before you see it. The devil's kingdom is microwave. So which one, what kingdom do you want to believe? Oh, if Jesus don't show up on Thursday, I give up. Really? Oh, if Jesus, you could be that close to the promised land and you give up. It, 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 the, the believers got this mentality of having instant coffee, instant milk, instant the people buy, I don't know how people drink 2% milk. That's water. Everything <laughs> organic. I can live them in the projects. I grew up in the pro. There was no organic. We had government cheese. No one died. It, 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 the mentality of the believer to the mentality of the person today has been watered down, ha has been manipulated by the enemy. And in your mind, you have to just believe God. The Bible says spiritual faith, spiritual endurance. And watch the devil flee, like my sister said. That's right, Brother John. And, and I believe more than ever that the Lord allows us to go through battles. Yes, because we live in this world. And yes, because the enemy hates us. But I believe, Brother John, that it's to build spiritual muscle. Because but but the, the thing, my sister, the devil is the best sandpaper. The devil is the best sandpaper that God uses to polish you. You want to be a strong believer? Then let God use the devil as a sandpaper to polish you. You, you know, you want to be a weak believer? You want to be one of them Gilligan believers? That's, that's different, but the devil is the sandpaper that God will use to polish you to make a strong believer, strong in your faith, because the currency of heaven is faith. So God's going to use the devil to polish you. So, so you think the attacks that are coming, or, or, or the attacks that are coming, that you are attacked free? That, that, that not, that now you hear these people that come to Jesus, you're going to be joyful. Come to Jesus, you're going to have the best life ever. There's rewards in the valley. But the Bible says, you walk to the valley of shadow of death, but I fear no evil. And God said, he prepared to for the presence of my enemy. And the devils have to watch me eat because there's nothing they can do. My God said, I'm a more than a conqueror. God's word is true and every man is a liar. I hold on to his word. I'm a ride this all the way till I get, I get to the party gates. Amen, Brother John. I have two last questions for you. Brother John, what is your advice to the pastors that are so adamant that they, don't, that they don't want to talk about the schemes of the enemy. They don't want to talk about spiritual warfare because in their perspective, they're saying, if we talk about Satan and his schemes, we're magnifying and glorifying Satan. No, no, they're liars. These pastors are liars. They're in bed with the devil. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want to be exposed because they know that the, the devil comes to their church. The devil is going to expose them because behind the scenes, they're living a different lifestyle. And thank God, not all pastors, but most of these pastors are doing that. They just, I just find out, I can name pastors that I can tell you that actually got paid under the table to, to convince their church to take the COVID-19 shot. Okay? So the, the corruption in the church is wicked. It is wicked. And these pastors, they're not magnifying the devil. It's one thing to magnify the devil. It's one way I can magnify the devil to say, oh, the devil's awesome. The devil's this. The devil's all powerful. Then I'm magnifying the devil. But God called us to expose the deeds of darkness, okay? So that's a whole different story. But you don't want to expose the devil because you know what? You're afraid the devil's going to expose you. And you're afraid of the devil because you don't know how to fight the devil because you don't have no spiritual warfare backbone. Because who did more delivering? Who, spoke, who exposed the devil more than Jesus when he walked the earth? And you're telling me you're rinking dinky, watered down, new age gospel that you got going on, and you're comfortable with that. But you know why? You're going to have to give God an account one day because you're going to have to stand in front of God, and God's going to tell you, you, God's going to tell you, I never knew you. Depart from me because you didn't preach. You didn't cast out demons, and you didn't, and you, and you didn't set the captives free. And, and, and my people were tormented. They sat on your watch, and you did nothing. You did nothing. God was going to hold you responsible because you didn't get into the fight. You were not a Nehemiah. Nehemiah was an amazing man of God. He built the kingdom on one hand and had a soul on the other hand waiting for the devil to show up. So you practice a little new age. You practice your little new age. You practice a little, uh, all your demonic stuff in your church because there's more witchcraft in the church than in the world.
Brother John, I, I agree with you 100% on that. I think one of the biggest lies that the enemy has told the church in America is that we don't want to expose the enemy. We don't want to talk about him. That's one of the biggest traps because you just nailed it with your opening scripture that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And that's why mm -hmm. people keep falling for the tricks of the enemy because the pastors do not preach about the how the enemy operates and, and what the enemy is using to seduce and entrap the people of God. Yeah, even 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 Paul says Paul says I think I'm just paraphrasing Paul saying in Second Corinthians verse eleven he said he said don't be don't be ignorant to the devil's devices don't be ignorant to the devil's device this is Paul this is the apostle Paul 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 wrote three, 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 two thirds of the New Testament this is the apostle Paul in the end apostle what did the apostle Paul say in the end I fought the good fight Paul was on the battleship he was not a, half of the church are on a cruise ship drinking pina coladas. They're not on a battleship. They're not fighting for people. They're not fighting for souls. They're not fighting for people to be baptized. They're not fighting for people to be set free. All they do is just, well, you know, my friend's a Christian constant. Go see him. But you and your friend need deliverance. You know, it, it's like when David Wilkinson started King's Challenge, right? Uh, he, went, he went to this meeting. Rockefeller was there. Mr. Rockefeller was at the meeting. And, the, and Rockefeller said, I got this 12 program and people are still in bondage. People are still doing drugs. You know what Wilkerson and Nikki used to do? When people used to come to Chin Chan, lay hands on them, catch that demonic devil and from a kid spirit, and people would be set free. That's what they used to do. Power of the Holy Spirit. Hit that drug dealer. Hit that drug addict. Hit, they will be set free on the spot. That's the power of the gospel. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of the church that Jesus Christ died for. And that's the same church he's coming back for. Yes, Brother John, I agree with you. And he's getting ready. He's, he's preparing the remnant for that mighty move of God. And I believe, Brother John, that we're going to see a revival. We're going to see the awakening of the church with the power of Jesus Christ like never before. Do you see this? Do you see today? Do you see the church today on TV? Do you go to TVN? It's a joke. The only, the, only, the, only, the, only, the only people that are fighting the good fight is Daystar. They're not afraid. I've been on Daystar a few times. We exposed the devil like no tomorrow. Like Madeline Hickey. I've been a man on Hickey show. We, we exposed the devil like no tomorrow. You see these other people, all they want to do is promote and get money. Promote and get money. You're nothing but a witch. You're nothing but a witch. You're nothing but a witch. Promote and get money. You're not building the kingdom. You're building your pockets. Yeah, Brother John. And one last question, Brother John. What is your advice to, to those that are in the occult that are tapping into Satanism and they want to leave and now they're recognizing that what they're doing is wrong? What, what is your advice? My advice, you listen, you want to leave the occult? Email my sister, put me back on the show, and let's shame the devil. Let's renounce Santeria. Let's renounce spiritualism. Let's renounce New Age. All you have to do is renounce. Listen, I left the highest level of the occult. I was recruited from the occult at the age of seven and a half years old. My first initiation was eight years old, officially by the hands of witches and warlocks. But my first initiation was seven and a half. A necklace fell from the second heaven. I was recruited straight from the second heaven. And if God can set me free, and I have more ceremonies, I, as a matter of fact, I ran out of ceremony. There was no more ceremonies for me to do. I did all the ceremonies. Matter of fact, let me just share one last ceremony I did. It's called Sansi. Sansi is a Haitian ceremony that in the end of the ceremony, they this is listen to this part, my sister. So people wake up and smell the coffee. The last that's the last ceremony I did was uh, it's called Sansi. And uh, that was a, the the second last ceremony I did in the witchcraft world. And Sansi is a is a demonic uh, Haitian ceremony. You can only be handpicked by the devil to do that ceremony. And that ceremony, in the end of the ceremony. They bathed you in ice water, right? To seal the deal with the devil. And what would the church join? The ice bucket challenge. They were doing the same thing. They were doing the same, making the deal with the devil, the ice bucket challenge. And they were doing the same thing. When I did the ceremony of Sansi, the last thing they do to, cl to close the deal with the devil, they take ice bucket and they pour it over you. That's how ignorant the church is in the world, not affecting the world, in the world, in bed with the world. God said, you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God.
Wow, Brother John. Yeah, I think I need to invite you back on because there's a lot, a lot to unfold and expose. So, Brother John, you're basically saying that even if they sell their soul to the enemy, God still has the power to reach. But you, you can't sell. Let me let me break something down real quick, my sister. Listen, you can't sell your soul. See, they make you, the devil makes you believe you sold your soul. You can't you can't redeem your soul. The devil makes you believe once you sold the soul to him, you can't get it back. There's nothing that can get it back for you. That is a lie from the pits of hell. And let me explain something to, to you. you. You can never sell your soul to nobody. It's like me having a car, right? And I say, hey, my sister, you want to buy my car? You want to buy my Corvette? You want to buy my Porsche? You want to buy my Ferrari? Whatever I have. I don't have none of those, by the way. Just saying. Don't have no Ferrari. I have no Porsche. Just talking. But if I was to uh, have one of those, and you say, okay, John, I love it. I want to buy it but I can't sell it to you. You know why I can't sell it to you? Because I don't have the title, right? Who owns the title of your soul? Jesus Christ does. So Jesus owned the title of your soul. The Bible says absent from the body, presence in the Lord, right? Not presence with the devil, right? The Bible said the point of a man die is a judgment, right? Who owns your soul? Jesus does. He has the title. What you do is, listen to me, people that are in a cult, what you're doing is when you make a pact with the devil, like I did, you sell your allegiance to the devil. You sell your time. I'm, I, my allegiance, I sell it to you because I'm, I, I made a commitment to serve you all the days of my life. You sell that to the devil. You sell your time. That's what the Bible said, redeem your time. The days are evil. You're selling your time to the devil. You're selling your timeshare to the devil, but you can't sell your soul. Because the day you die, it goes right back to Jesus to be judged. You can get out whenever you want. The devil is a liar, and he's lying to you, and God can set you free. And then God can rewrite your story, and the mess that you're in, he can make it a masterpiece and call it your testimony, like he did for me. Brother John, would you be okay in praying for those that are listening and for those that are at, going through right now demonic attack right now. Can you say a prayer? Absolutely. So we just got to come in agreement. Listen, my brothers and sisters, whatever you're going through, all you have to do is just put yourself in one place. Put yourself in the hands of Jesus Christ and say just real quick, whatever's attacking you, whatever you're going through, renounce. If you open doors, you did things that are ungodly. If you gave yourself to ungodly things, renounce those ungodly things because that's, that's why the attacks come. Because there's something that you open the door, something you made a mistake. God say, God say, seven, if man falls seven times, he get back up, right? It's a getting up to count. So all you have to say, whatever oppression, depression, or whatever, even if you have suicide thoughts, or even if you have pornographic thoughts, even if you're on medication today, even though if you feel oppressed, depressed, listen, renounce that devil. That devil, every, every oppression, depression has a name. And those names have to bow down to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today, Father, in Jesus' name, we break, destroy, dismantle. We curse to the root every demonic stronghold, bondage, Father God, every demonic attack of my brothers and sisters today in the mighty name of Jesus. We smite those devils. We send confusing into the devil's camp. Let those demons attack one another in the name of Jesus. I break patterns and cycle reaping. I break every stronghold. I break every legal right that the devil has against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break those legal rights in Jesus' name right now. I break it by the blood of Jesus Christ. I touch it. To let the Holy Spirit touch it from the crown of your head to your soul, your feet. I break oppression, depression off you. I break any suicide spirit, pharma care spirit, any medication devil come out. Every devil medication come out of you today. I pray, Father God, any pornographic devil come out of you today. Any social media devil that you letting the devil steal you down to social media, but you're not spending time with God. I break that off you today in the name of Jesus. Every TikTok devil break in the name of Jesus. Every demonic stronghold, generational curses in your family, bloodline, father, mother side, to all the way down to Adam. I curse those things to the root. Let, father, right now, set your family, set your children free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother John, this is so awesome. There's truly too much to, to discuss that we'll, we'll need another, another hour to go even deeper. But Brother John, you have some amazing resources for the people of God that are wanting to know more about spiritual warfare, those that are needing deliverance. Uh, can you share a little bit of the, the resources that you have? You know, I, I, have, you know, I have this, uh, I have a resource. It's called, it's called uh, e-course. E e-course, you will never get this in Bible college. You never get this in your own church. 
I'm teaching you the devil's playbook. I'm teaching the patterns and cycles of the devil. I'm teaching you how to fight the demons at night that come at night and try to torment you. I'm teaching you how to stay free, how to conquer your deliverance. Up in my website, if you go to johnramirez.org, you see the e-courses. You can, you can, you could, you could, it's, it's eight weeks of intense spiritual warfare with a workbook and spiritual warfare press. I had I had emails from unbelievers are taking the e-course. That's how desperate they are. Unbelievers. I I, I got I got I got uh, I got people that have I spoke in Zoom to Q and A question. Homosexual people taking e-course because they're so desperate to be set free. You know they're so desperate. We live in times now that people know that if God don't show up, you're dead in the water. We the government can't help you. Politicians can't help you. Medication can't help you. Only Jesus can help you. The times we're in, because Jesus is around the corner. He's coming soon. Amen. So, so these e courses will not only help you stay free, will help you conquer your deliverance and teach your spiritual warfare on the highest level of spiritual warfare, fighting the devil from the third heaven, not on the spirit, not on the round, not in the earth round, from the heaven, third heaven, a position of authority. I teach believers. I get testimonies of testimony. People say, John, thank you. Now I know how to fight the good fight. My pastor didn't help me. My church didn't help me. But the e-course helped me and set me free. So, guys, for those of you that you, you're, you believe that you've been going through some demonic attacks in your mind, you're dealing with depression, suicidal thoughts, maybe some very deep phobias. Oh. Mm -hmm. On oh, I highly recommend for you guys to look into Brother John's resources so that you can really get the help that you need. Yes, Brother John. Yeah, my, and there are people that are dealing, how many people I know I talk to, they're like, I, I, I feel sick, I can't, I feel tired, I feel, I feel sick. I go to doctors, they do all kinds of tests, I don't find nothing on me. You know, you can break those spirit of sickness off your body. Listen, I prayed for this lady not too long ago, she had four stage cancer. She has less than six months to live. She was a Muslim. She came to my meeting. She renounced Islam. She received Jesus. I pray, Lord, heal her completely and fully. I came back. She had less than six months to live. Doctor said, "Go home and make peace with your make peace with your family. You're gonna die." Today, it's been years now. It's been like three or four years. She's still preaching the gospel. She, she said, "I bring more people to church than my pastor because the spirit of cancer was destroyed out of her body." And today, the doc, she's an example of God's healing power and she will heal completely this is a grateful woman that bring more people to church now an ex-muslim was supposed to die six months ago six months she was supposed to die and she's bringing people to the cross of jesus christ because too much is given too much is required brother john any last words that you'd like to share to our audience before we end up this conversation yeah all i say build your relationship with the holy spirit let him be your best friend not by words by action Build relationship with God because no one knows the Father. No one knows the love of the Father. You need the love of the Father. You need to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's reigning and ruling on the earth. Build your relationship with the Holy Get into the Word of God. Let the Word of God be, be, be engrafted in your heart. Let the fear of God live in you and you'll make it to the finish line. Amen. Well, Brother John, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and all the knowledge that you've gained throughout the years. And I believe that a lot of people are going to be blessed and encouraged to really step out to get help. And guys, again, if you are going through any type of demonic attack, please, I'll share all of the links and the resources in the link box below so that you can be able to get the knowledge that you need to be able to step out into complete freedom. Brother John is a complete witness that there is power in the name of Jesus, that you can be set free from all of the things that you've been bound to, the things that you've been tormented with. You have freedom in the name of Jesus. Brother Amen. John, again, thank you so much. And God, thank you so much, my sister. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It was a, I, I just, I, one thing I said, the whole, the presence of God was with us all, all, the whole hour. Praise God, Brother John, and God willing, we'll be able to meet again and be able to schedule another uh, meeting so that more people can be more aware. But thank you guys for tuning in, and you guys stay blessed. God bless you. Bye-bye.